Some words go great together like free and pizza, or ham and pineapple and pizza. And to that list I would like to add lasers and fusion and pizza. You might have heard that last week physicists in California achieved what's been hailed by some as one of the greatest breakthroughs of the nuclear age. In the journal Nature they reported that in October 2013 while conducting experiments at Lawrence Livermore's National Ignition Facility they succeeded in creating more energy with a nuclear fusion reaction than they put into it. I'm happy to report that this is indeed the first time scientists have created an energy surplus or what experts call fuel gain using fusion. So Hank, you wondering, does this mean we could basically do what the sun does? Does now is fusion power just around the corner? And when exactly am I gonna get my Back to the Future style Mr. Fusion generator so I can run my car on eggshells and banana peels? Well, let me start out by saying that nuclear fusion is, as Marty McFly would put it, heavy. Some of you long-time Everlovin' SciShow News viewers might remember when I first introduced you to the National Ignition Facility two whole years ago. Aside from having one of the coolest names of any lab this side of the Large Hadron Collider, the NIF is home of the world's largest lasers. Since 2011, physicists have been using those lasers to try to superheat and supercompress a 10 milligram pellet of hydrogen isotopes in an effort to fuse them, creating helium, a few stray neutrons, and a whole bunch of energy. If all 10 milligrams of that hydrogen, enough to cover the head of a pin, were to fuse, it would generate nearly as much energy as a barrel of oil. But that is not what's happened. Instead, in a fraction of a second, the combined power of nearly 200 enormous lasers created 17 kilojoules of energy, which is like the same energy you get from eating a gram of hamburger. So not enough to power your DeLorean or even your Honda Civic, but still, Livermore physicists describe their latest achievement as a breakthrough in bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is essentially the very beginning of a chain reaction. In this case, it's the point where the energy of the helium nuclei, aka alpha particles, produced in the initial reaction goes right back into the fuel rather than escaping. This energy goes on to heat the hydrogen fuel even more, which causes more fusion reactions and produces more alpha particles. But then it stopped, as it always does in these experiments, because perhaps more than anything else in the universe, nuclear fusion is a really energy expensive process. In order to jam hydrogen atoms together, it not only takes an enormous amount of heat, like 50 million Kelvin, and pressure on the order of 100 billion Earth atmospheres, but in a lab environment, it turns out you also have to expend a lot of energy just to keep the fuel contained. It makes sense when you think about it. The power of the NIF's 192 lasers focused on the head of a pin could easily shatter that pellet of hydrogen into smithereens. So in order to stabilize it, physicists changed the shape of their lasers to form a kind of nest to hold the fuel as it was being blasted. And here's where we get to the heaviest part. The physicists ended up having to use two megajoules of energy just to stabilize the fuel, while only 1% of of that, about 10 kilojoules actually went into the fuel itself. In the end, the bootstrapping released about 17 kilojoules, which equals about 4 kilocalories of food energy. So, strictly speaking, NIF's physicists did indeed create a surplus of energy from the fusion reaction. But it was not a surplus from the whole system, which included all of the energy that went into keeping the fuel from flying apart. And it still didn't reach the laboratory's ultimate goal, which is ignition. That's when fusion creates enough energy to fuse the rest of the hydrogen fuel. It's like the difference between fizzling a little bit when you're trying to start your fire and the fire starting. So we're not back to the future yet, but nobody wants to see these people succeed more than we do. Because to be honest, we don't take the trash out here at SciShow very often. We have a whole bunch of Mr. Fusion fuel just waiting to be used. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow News, especially to our subbable subscribers. Would you like your very own customized SciShow lab coat? Or how about seeing your name in one of our graphics? To find out about these and other keen perks, go to subbable.com slash SciShow. And if you have any questions or comments or ideas for us, you can find Find us on Facebook and Twitter and down in the comments below. And if you want to keep getting smarter with us, don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. <laughs>